beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed are you ready for this morning in one minute, just ask the Lord to grant you revelation. Father, I'm here to learn. I'm here to listen. Please pray. Let your heart be open. I desire to be efficient. You are praying. As a man of God, a woman of God, as a church leader, as a Christian leader, as a business leader, I desire to be efficient. Teach me how, grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want to deal with is a revelation. Please look up. A revelation of the divine life that we have received i told you yesterday that we're going to touch a bit about it most people do not realize that being a christian has a spiritual implication a man of god a minister of the gospel is not a political appointee a minister of the gospel is not a politician who was voted into power in a democratic system or appointed by some leader the call to ministry, the call to leadership is a noble call that has spiritual implications. There is a throne that backs anyone who is serving the purposes of God and more so called in the capacity of leadership. Hallelujah. The first expression of the reality of God living in us is the divine life that comes through new birth. Jesus began this discourse with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. When you read from verse 1, 2, 3, then we jump to verse 16. John chapter 3, please help us media. John chapter 3, we'll start from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, the Bible says, named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. Then the Bible says he came to Jesus by night and began a discourse. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. There are some results that cannot be produced by men outside of the influence and the assistance of God. Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again isn't this interesting he's talking to jesus about miracles signs and wonders and jesus is saying let me tell you how this happens it starts the foundation for this possibility is that except a man be born again that means these possibilities are proof that the kingdom has come to you and except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom 
when you get to the next verse he says except a man be born of the water and spirit he cannot enter the kingdom this was jesus teaching a pharisee and when we get to verse 16 jesus now is teaching and here's what he said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son now according to the authority of scripture when we read this scripture today he is not his only begotten son today he is the first begotten of we the brethren but as at the time he was the only begotten son and here's the condition that whosoever believes in him that that person will not perish but have ever That there is such a life that can come to someone already alive. Are we together now? Remember, the person he's saying will receive this life is not dead physically. That even though you are breathing in and breathing out, there is another life that can come upon you. So there is your biological life. Is that true? That authorizes your body and your spirit to coexist in this realm. That is biology. But there is this spiritual life. King James puts it as everlasting life. Um, but when, when, you study, when you study scripture, you study the Greek and the Hebrew expressions of these words, you will find out that the word is not exactly everlasting. Now, the way the Bible was written, as you know, the Old Testament was written largely in Hebrew. And then the New Testament was written largely in Greek and Aramaic. There is a, you know, Latin here and there, both the old and the new. Now, the way these words work is that the theologians would usually look for a word and look for the best contextual expression that captures that word. And that is what is translated into English. Are we together? So many synonyms come to terms with this expression and they picked everlasting sometimes you will see eternal they did their best but the truth is that the life that we have received the life that jesus is talking about is not everlasting life you may have heard me say it everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is not just what jesus gives when you come to him when people die they don't stop living they only stop, they relocate themselves from this realm. Jesus himself was given the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Is that true? Both of them died. But they were alive again in another dimension. So everlasting life is not a privilege of Christians. Everyone created by God has everlasting life. The condition for everlasting life is that you pass through the womb of a woman. Once you are born of a woman... The seed of Abraham, the seed of Adam, you have everlasting life. Are we together? The word there is not even eternal. The word translated there is called Zoe. By the time John the Beloved, when you look at the progression of his revelation and growth, when we get to the epistle of John, he now begins to call it the life of God. John had grown. The life of God, Zoe is the Greek word, is a quality of life. Great men like Papa Hagen wrote books. In fact, there is a book by him called Zoe. Um, many of them say it is the God kind of life. Now, I respect their opinion. Remember, revelation is progressive. At the time they had this revelation, they call it the God kind of life. But according to the authority of scripture and they I ever to differ it is not the eternal. God kind of life it is the very life of God are we together now God did not give us his kind of life he gave us his very life the Bible says he that is joined to Christ we're going there shortly is one spirit he did not give us a type of his Holy Spirit it's his very spirit. The same spirit that was in Jesus is the same spirit that is in us. There are not many of them and he just gave us a type. No, no. Is that true? When he said, I will send you another comforter. 
is the word the paraclete. Alos paracletos. Alos means of the same, the exact same one. Heteros means another kind, but of the same tribe. So when he says, I send you another comforter, an extension of me. Listen carefully. Now, when we come to Christ, the Bible lets us know the condition of the fallen man. Paul was mentoring the church in Rome and he said, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What glory is that? You would have to go back to the book of the beginnings to help you understand the state of man as designed by God. We considered a bit of that yesterday. Are we still together? There are three things that God gave man that made him the zenith of his creation. Adam now. Number one, God gave man dominion. What is dominion? Sovereign power over the entire creation. He mandated man to be head over his creation. That everything he created would be subject to man. Number two, God gave man something that we would learn in the Pauline epistle called righteousness. We're discussing doctrine now. Righteousness. E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability or the capacity to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority, and without a sense of condemnation. But I define righteousness as the very nature of God. It is your legitimate authorization to stand before God. Righteousness. Man had that. The third thing that God gave man was his spirit. And God breathed upon that man. He was not just breathing a human spirit to enter him. For man was first created spirit. I hope you know that when God was giving this man dominion mandate, he did not have a body. That was why, that's why the dominion mandate is not for the male. Because the woman was still in the man when he was said, be fruitful. He was speaking to Adam. Are we together now? When we read Genesis 1 verse 2, God now molded dust and transferred that spirit into that dust. And man became that living soul. Man is spirit. But according to the law of territory, it's illegal for a spirit to operate in this realm without a human body. For you to operate in any territory, you must be made of the same material of that territory. Is that true? Is the reason why demons are illegal occupants because they do not have authorized bodies to function. It's also the reason why they look for men or they look for anything created out of. When the Bible says God made man from the dust of the earth, it doesn't mean God used sand to make man. It means he sourced the materials for his body from the elements of the ecosystem. That means your body should be compatible to trees, to water, to wind. It means none of them should hurt you. If they hurt you, a spirit is manipulating them. Because your body was created to be at peace with your ecosystem. Are you listening to me now? Please pay attention. We're, we're discussing the divine life. It's true. You would notice a parallel operation between the human body and even your ecosystem. Let me give you a few. Number one, your body is made of 70% water. The same way the earth is made of 70% water. You see, there is that similarity. Is that true? The same way you can mow your lawn and it grows back. That's the same way the human hair works, isn't it? You can cut it, it grows back, just like grass. The same way your bones, after many years, are still there. It's the same way rocks live for many, many years. You can carbonate rocks and see that they are probably millions of years. There is a parallel. That means the wind should not hurt you. So when there is something called airborne disease, waterborne disease, there is a spirit manipulating them. Water should not hurt you. Listen. The same water that is, that is killing people is in you, and yet it does not hurt you. The same air that is hurting people is the one that you breathe to give you life. That is the reason why Satan too uses them to destroy you. Because if the elements don't cooperate with him, even him cannot do anything about it. 
He will have to use this element. Listen, when you understand what I'm teaching you, don't tempt me in the name of Jesus. I reject this temptation in Jesus' name. It's true. The supernatural can only find expression in this realm when it is in partnership with the elements of this realm. Even the Holy Spirit, if he's to enter this earth, he will have to be in the similitude of a dove or light or fire or come upon a human body. Are you seeing that now? Yes. And so, man was created to be at peace with this system. Remember three things. Don't forget. Number one, that God gave man dominion, sovereign control, stewardship and may i say this that the dominion god gave man is not absolute dominion there are two levels of dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion the dominion man received is shared dominion is that true yes shared dominion is the kind of dominion that a tenant gets when he pays rent it is his house even though the landlord owns the house, but he has a right to call it my house. And even the landlord will have to respect him from the time he pays the rent. It is the landlord's house, but he cannot come in and just open the door. He will have to respect that man from that day. Because there was a legitimate ground upon which the man can say, my house. Even in front of the landlord, you are welcome to my house. And the landlord does not say you are making a mistake because it is his house. Yet it is the landlord's house. You understand that now? Yes. So when he says the earth has he given to the sons of man, when we say this is our territory, we are not lying, even though the earth is the Lord's. So we have shared dominion and we have absolute dominion. Absolute dominion talks of ownership. Shared dominion talks of stewardship. But both of them refer to authority and control. Are we learning something this morning? So God gave man dominion. He gave man righteousness. He gave man the Holy Spirit. So when man fell, what do you think he lost? If God gave man these three things, these three things God gave man is what separates him from every other creation. If man loses these three things, there is no reason why creation should respect him again. Whoever has this tripartite combination of dominion, the righteousness of God, and the presence of the Spirit of God qualifies to be the representation of God within that sphere. When man fell, these were the three things he lost. If you don't know what man lost, you will not know what redemption was made to restore. You see, when Jesus came, this is what he came to restore. These three things that man lost. Man lost dominion, he lost righteousness, he lost the Holy Spirit, who was the representation of the life of God. So Jesus walks to the earth now, and he says, I have come for a reason, to bring reconciliation. And for 30 years, he went through all that process, and then his passion would begin. From the communion, the Bible lets us know that he broke bread. I don't want to go into the whole theological explanation of those sacraments of the communion but jesus when he walked upon the earth please look up look up please look up please look up jesus came not only to die for man and restore these things we lost jesus came according to scripture as a pattern man he came to show us a blueprint of god's expectation how to walk upon this earth and to exercise that dominion in a way that satisfies the Father. And the Father himself spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son. He is my recommendation. Hear him. Study him. Do not be afraid to pay attention to anything he tells you. He has received my approval, the Bible says. Is that true? And Jesus began to walk upon the earth as an expression of God. One of the reasons also that Jesus came to walk upon the earth was to correct our perceptions about God. Because until Jesus came, 
they could not have that level of intimacy with God. Even when the Bible tells us that Moses and all of these men saw God face to face, don't think they were just seeing God like that. They saw similitudes and they had his voice from the midst of them. When the Bible says he saw God face to face, the face of God is not like a human face. No. The face of God is a realm. It's not an object that you look at. If you, if you look at the face of God, you may not return to the earth again. Because you are entering into a realm. The face of God is not like a human face. You know, when you say the face of a man, you mean the upper part that just covers the skull. That's a wrong definition when you are talking about God. The face of God itself is a mystery. So when they talk about seeing God face to face, it doesn't mean that you just saw the entire face and the form of God. The first time people would see an expression of God was when Jesus himself came. The Bible calls him the incarnate of God. He is the, the express image, Hebrews says, of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past, had in this last day spoken to us by the, his son, whom he had appointed to be heir of all things. Is that true? Media, please let's work together so that when we have these scriptures, if the people can just look at it. Let's look at verse 3. It says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The express image of that invisible God. The Bible says the word became flesh. So Jesus was the expression of God now constrained in a material body. I hope you know that his original name was not Jesus. Jesus was the name that they were instructed to give him when he carried a mortal body. His original name always was and is the word of God, the logos of God, the thoughts of God in action. He is the rider upon the horse in Revelations. He is still called the Word of God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. The name Jesus was given to him. You see, if you understand this, you will know that the power is not in pronouncing J-E-S-U-S. -S. You have been saying it. When we say Jesus, we are letting people know that the one we are talking about is the one who was called Jesus on earth. It is not Jesus that makes demons run away. No. Because there are times you don't mention any name and yet they run away. And the Bible says if they ever run, it was the name that drove them. So what did you say? Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? I am not saying to not say Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? When we say Jesus, we are telling creation that that Jesus has been made both Lord and Christ. So the Lord and Christ we are calling is the Jesus you know. The same way you say my father is a CEO. His name is not CEO. No. The office gave him an office so that you can relate with him. But when a child is talking and he says my father, he say, who are you talking about? He say, okay, the CEO. Now you understand. Your CEO is my father. He came as a manifestation of the word of God. The God of the Hebrews, the one they could not understand. The mysterious one who moved as fire, smoke and all of these things. Now he was constrained in a human body. And Jesus began to work miracles. Watch this. Signs and wonders. Marvelous things. He began to teach them about a superior kingdom. In a lecture that we have come to capture as the Beatitudes. He was mentoring them, helping them. They would gather in conferences like this and have Jesus teach. And can you imagine the level of the teaching that for three days people could not leave? Until he said, do you know what? Feed them. Do you, you, you see that it was justifiable that the Pharisees were angry. What sort of a man is this who would keep people down? Go home. They said, no way. Continue. We have not had it in this manner. If you were the priest, will you be happy? They had not seen it in this way. They had not seen compassion this way. They had not seen the miraculous this way. God was teaching men how to know God. 
Jesus was not an ordained minister of the gospel. Jesus was not a pastor of a church. Jesus was God who came down to become the lecturer because the lecturers were misrepresenting him. And he said, I will come by myself and now I want to teach you so that you will know me. And God said, listen to him. Please sit down. There are many things that Jesus said that we must pay attention to. And then, the Bible lets us know that he began the process of his passion. The passion of Jesus started officially from that communion table. The mystery of the bread and the cup, which he said were both himself. The bread being his body, the cup being his blood. And then he went to Gethsemane, cried there, prayed. Why did he cry? Because for the first time, he would be disunited with the Trinity. They had always been one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But Jesus would not die if the Trinity is united. They would have to be disunited in some way. And Jesus would have to allow that for the purpose of redemption. Is that true? Now, notice everything that happened to Jesus. The Pauline epistle teaches us that it was an exchange. Is that true? The Bible lets us know that when Jesus, he was stripped naked. Why? Because man lost that glory. That Shekinah that would cover him. Jesus had to be stripped naked. In exchange for the restoration of that glory. Next thing they put a crown of thorns on his head. A crown is one of the symbols of a king's authority. His crown and his scepter. If a king loses his crown and his scepter, even if he has a throne, he is not a king. So the crown of thorns was put on his head to restore our dominion as kings and priests. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8. That we have today been made unto our God a kingdom of priests and that we shall reign forever. Are we still together? Then the Bible says he was beaten. According to the way they lashed the Jews, 40 stripes save one. He, was, he received 39 of those stripes. And the Bible tells us that by that stripe, that means they thought they were just flogging him, but they were fulfilling something. There was an exchange. By that stripe, Peter said, we were healed. As his body was lacerated, blood was coming out. And then he was now hung upon a tree. Why? To fulfill the law that says, cost is a man. Paul was again teaching and i think that's galatians chapter 3 when you read from verse 10 it says christ has redeemed us from the cost of the is written written what is, is written cost is every man not that dies if you die you are a dead man not a cost to be a cost you have to die on a tree so jesus carried that tree is that true Please look for, I think, verse 8 or so, something like that. From verse 10 to 13, or there about. Did I get that right? Go to verse 12 or 13, so that we can have the reference. Christ has redeemed us, he says, from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us. For it is written. Everybody say it is written. Yes. Cost is every man that hangs on a tree. If Jesus died on the ground, they will go and bury him. He will be the word that died. Not for anybody's sins. He needed to hang on the cross. The Bible says that the blessing of Abraham. You know what the blessing of Abraham is? The blessing of Abraham is not cast and houses. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. That is the basis for righteousness. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. Because Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So we like Abraham, if we hear that it is the blessing of Abraham. That pattern was named after him. Is that true? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon we the Gentiles, comma, that now being righteous we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The three things we lost now restored in, in redemption. Dominion restored, 
Righteousness restored. The Holy Spirit restored. When Jesus hung upon that cross, he died and said it is finished. And you know Jesus died and he did not go to heaven. Because when sinners die, they don't go to heaven. Is that true? And so they, he went there already in my place and your place. And when he went to Hades, the place of the dead, the Bible tells us Paul was shown this. You see why Paul was a powerful apostle? He saw by revelation what happened in the place of the dead. That when Jesus arrived there, the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow. What is it about bowing? Bowing means acknowledging lordship. So they were forcing him to bow to Satan who had collected the keys of dominion from Adam. And from that time he became the legal head of the earth. God also had to respect it. So he came, I paid the price, hand me over the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. I am he, when you read from verse 1 to 6, I am he that was dead and now is alive and I have the keys. That's where he got it. He went and got it in hell and then he went and preached the gospel to those who were bound waiting in hope for this redemption. And they believed him. And he now led captivity captive. And then he came out physically with his body alongside many of the departed saints. They walked around Jerusalem and everybody saw them. But, you see, when he came out, he went to heaven first because he was not done. He was done as a savior, but not yet as a priest. Now he would go to heaven and finish up the priesthood, the Melchizedek order of priesthood. Is that true now? When he went to heaven, he carried his own blood to the tabernacle. There is a real tabernacle in heaven. And when he went there, he poured that blood once and for all. And you've heard me teach it. The mystery of the atonement is a system of pacifism but it was designed such that a one year old lamb would die so that it would be renewed because according to that law the length of the atonement is equal to the age of the lamb that died are you seeing that now so if it's a one year lamb the atonement is for how long so jesus who is the ageless lamb now died and carried his blood there you see how it is so that for you to know how long the atonement is, find out which lamb died. That's why they said, worthy is the lamb. This lamb is not a one-year-old lamb. It's not a 33-year-old lamb. Please sit down. It is on this basis that the Bible says we have eternal redemption by his blood. Are we learning now? Remember where we are dealing, we are not talking about redemption, we are talking about the life of God. If you do not know this, you will never have genuine spiritual authority and power as a minister. Most people bypass this understanding and all they want is impartation. Is the reason why many people are not strong. Because it takes the oil and the vessel for profits to happen. If the only thing you have is oil and there is no vessel, there will still not be profit. It is oil plus many vessels and a large spiritual capacity. That's what brings profit. Hallelujah. When he offered his blood, the Bible tells us that the next event in heaven was a coronation service. David saw this. Paul saw this. What did David see? The Lord said to my Lord, sit down. At my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That coronation service. This is what he was saying in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. He says, let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who although he was equal with God. He didn't consider it to be robbery. But he gave himself. He came down. He died. Is that true? Even death on the cross. Wherefore, by reason of this, God had so highly exalted him. And gave him a name. Here is our name again. A name does not just mean a means of identification. An office. God gave him an office. That is above every other office. Next verse. It says, verse 10 now. That at the name of Jesus. At the revelation. Not just the mention. The revelation. Of that name of Jesus. Every knee. 
should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has been given an office. The name of the office, which is really the name, is Lord. That's the office. What drives demons is not J-E-S-U-S. What drives demons is the power that backs his lordship. The earth is the Lord. So when we say Jesus is Lord, we are saying this same Jesus. Remember the apostles taught it in the book of Acts. They said today God has made him both Lord and Christ. Jesus. He's no longer just the carpenter's son. He's no longer just Mary's son. He's no longer just the firstborn of his brothers. No, he is Lord. Lord means absolute owner. And anytime you are Lord, there are four things you must own. If you do not own it, you are not the Lord. Can I show you? Am I wasting your time? Psalm 24 verse 1. Anybody who tells you he is Lord, ask him, show me your authority over these four dimensions. The Bible says, the earth. This is the first thing you must own to be Lord. You must have control over the earth. Number two, the resources in the earth. The fullness. If you do not have control over the resources, you are not Lord. Number three, the wall. The mind control systems. If you cannot influence the system. And then number four, the inhabitants. If you cannot influence this. Listen, this is the foundational pillar of dominion. If you want to take over a territory, you must take over the land, the resources, the mind control system, and the inhabitants. That's it. There's nothing left in that territory again. And this is what the devil is after. When Satan comes, he's after land. Go and read your Bible. What was the war about land about? That people will, every time Satan shows up, he does not just want men. He wants the land too. The physical land. There is a dimension of faith that is expressed in land. That is why when people give their lands to demons, when they give their lands to strangers, they are destroying the purposes of God over their life. It is true. Kings in ancient times showed the extent of their dominions by the land they will conquer and then establish something that represents them. Please do not forget these four things. I'm not teaching on dominion now. We'll do that hopefully maybe later in the evening when we are talking about the mystery of the ark. I want to show you how we triumph over battles and the vicissitudes of life by understanding the mystery of the ark. You will know why the nation of Israel as heavy as that thing was, they could enjoy it. Let it go with us to battle. We will never go to battle without it. Hallelujah. They would rather forget their swords and their weapons than to forget the ark. But today we remember our checkbooks. We remember everything but the ark. Leave that for evening. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at this. The earth the fullness, the system, the inhabitants. If Enugu is to call upon the name of the Lord, these are the four things that the intercessors must pray about. These are the four things that the captains of industry must pursue. The earth must say Jesus is Lord. The fullness must say Jesus is Lord. The system must be designed to honor that Lord. And the inhabitants must call upon the name of the Lord. When this happens, the kingdom has come. Let's get back to our teaching. Is someone learning something this morning? At least we have established a foundation yesterday. So I know that our hearts are right now. We can discuss these truths. When Jesus went to hell and defeated Satan, he resurrected and then... He ascended that coronation when it happened. He now returned back to earth. When he returned back to earth, listen carefully. He went and saw the timid disciples who were hiding and he appeared unto them and said, All hail. Something just happened to me. All authority, exousia, 
in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. He says, go therefore. I send you with this same backing. Is that true? Yes. Now, please listen to me. What does it mean to be saved? What does it mean to be a partaker of God's divine nature? Because many times we do not understand, even as preachers, we do a lot of altar calls and those who give their life, they just clap. And all they think, the only thing they can relate to their experience is that I've escaped hell, which is true, but not sufficient for victory. What really happened? The Bible lets us know, according to the Pauline epistle, that at the point of the new birth, among the many things that happened, number one, that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness. There is a switching of kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Number two, there is an exchange of dominion of the laws that are at work in that man's life. Galatians, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no more condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why? For the law of sin and death, is that true? Hath set me free. Or the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So there is something called the law of sin and death. Everybody who is not saved, no matter how confident they sound, no matter how free they sound, according to the authority of scripture, that law is at work in them. So when people are saved, as simple as it sounds, as simple as they look, they may be laughing while they are saying it. It does not negate the truth of scripture. There is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. Number two, the administration of righteousness. You cannot receive eternal life, the life of God. So wait until you have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. And the Bible already tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So... By believing that report, you receive the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith. Now that righteousness is imparted, imputed to you. And you can receive Zoe, the life of God. Can I tell you this? The life of God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not bring the life of God. He is the life of God. There is no record in scripture where the Holy Spirit is carrying any other object and bringing it to a man. His very presence is the life of God. The Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God in man. You are spiritually dead until he comes. The manifestation of God in man. Now, even though when you pray, you don't pray to the Holy Spirit for salvation. It is the office of the Christ that is responsible for everything that has to do with redemption. But the personality that lives in you, in honor to that prayer, is the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus Christ is in your heart today, you are right. But theologically speaking, Jesus as a person... The man, Jesus, is seated at the right hand of the Father. It is the Holy Spirit who represents an extension of His presence in your life. Physically, bodily, and even spiritually. Because the Bible says it's not only your spirit, even your body is His temple. So when you want to host God, you don't just host God in a building like this yet. It is that building, that temple... Of your body this is very powerful the holy spirit does not just live in our spirit even this physical body can host him is someone learning something for the purpose of our discussion my goodness there are two principal implications to having the divine life number one when you have the divine life which is the life of God, which is the Holy Spirit, you must be aware of two things. Number one, you must be aware that you have been made by that divine life 
one with Christ. Please, everybody say, I am one with Christ. Very simple teaching, but it is very powerful. The reality of our oneness. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe, from verse 7. Please, let's look at it. We're about to pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7. Did I get that right? Oh, dear. Please help me. There's a scripture that I'm looking for. We have been made one with Christ. Give me Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. No, 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 not, not 1 Corinthians 12. Just go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible says, and you as he quickened, we'll do a bit of reading, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh huh. Wherein in time past you walk according to this world. Listen, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh. Uh huh. That means the sons of disobedience are not just disobedient. They are one with a spirit. There is a spirit that makes this happen to them. Next verse, verse 3. It says, Among whom you had your conversation in time past, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, who were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Next verse, hallelujah. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, uh -huh, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us, together everybody say together the key word here is together verse, verse 6 now and had raised us up together everybody say together your oneness with christ your oneness with christ we see the same expression in john chapter 15 one of the keys jesus was talking about being divine and he ties it to our oneness with christ is it alright if we read it? The first eight verses, let's do it very quickly. I am the vine, ye and my father is the husband man. Uh -huh. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth that it may bring more fruit. Three, now ye are clean through the words which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me powerful instruction it says i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abided in me the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing for without me, if a man abided not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burnt. Uh -huh. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. Because I trust what you are asking because you are abiding in me. If you are not abiding in me, I do not trust what you are asking. What then becomes the motivation for your asking? Are we together now? Being one with Christ. Being one. The reality of your oneness. I am inseparable. Man of God, listen to me. You are not just a human body who was once a baby. Something happened to you when you gave your life to Christ. You are one with Christ. It's the principle of a salt covenant. It's a way of binding relationships that do not break easily. That means everybody was an ancient practice. Everybody will bring their salt together. And once you pour your salt, I pour my salt, we mix it together. The condition for the relationship to break is everybody must look for their salt and pick it out. I'm no longer a slave to feed. I am a child. Oneness with Christ. You are not just a Christian. You are one with Christ. It is true. The Bible lets us know that when the Holy Spirit came, He did not just come to confirm that you have life now. He came to represent the presence of God. Never will you walk alone. Never will you walk alone. That abiding presence is with you. You walk conscious of that presence. When you are laying hands, you know that it's, it's not only your hands that is on someone's head. When you are preaching, it's not only your voice. Their physical ears may be hearing your voice, but their spiritual ears are hearing the voice of the one backing you. 
Jesus himself showed us that the secret to his excelling when he walked on the earth. He said, I can of my own do nothing. Jesus showed us the consciousness of his oneness with Christ. It has blessed me in life and in ministry. Can I tell you this? Sometimes you look at mountains that stand before you in ministry and you're wondering, how do I start? Where do I go? But I remember, I'm not alone. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit who was with him will be with us and in us. There are many things Joshua Selman cannot do, but not when the Holy Spirit is there. The abiding presence of God. I learned this from Benny Hinn. The abiding presence of God. Men like E.W., men like um, Toza, they wrote a book on practicing the presence of God and how to cultivate that consciousness. It is already a reality, but it may not find expression in your life until the consciousness is at work in your mind. I am not alone. Someone shout it. Say, I'm not alone. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. I agree that I can fail. But me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. This is not just a Pentecostal talk. I really believe it with all my heart. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. You carry this mentality to ministry. Carry this mentality to church. Carry this mentality to business. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. Man of God, when you know this, you will know that there are no gimmicks to ministry. Ministry will thrive. And if they ask you why, you don't just say because I'm intelligent. I am conscious of this one, this paraclet of God who represents the life of God in me. Otherwise, how in the world do you believe that you're going to stand before someone who tells you, I have been bound for 30 years, and you believe in one meeting, you can look at him and say, go free. What arrogance without the Holy Spirit. By what authority? A man has been bound for 30 years, and you show up and look at him and say, go. I stand in part. When you tell, you see, when I look at you and I say, you are free, the weed there, the me who is telling you you are free. It's not Joshua Selman alone. Joshua Selman in partnership with the life of God. Hi, my goodness. I'm praying for you that you believe what I'm telling you. When you believe this, you will be a marvelous blessing. Listen, anyone just come, let me use you as an example. Do you know if you believe you have this life, all this good morning that you are shaking people anyhow and nothing is happening to them, you will shake someone, God bless you. You know, you know what you just said? And yet the person's life did not change. If you enter the house of a herbalist and say, sorry, this was not where I wanted to go. Do you know just for entering, your life would not be the same? Like you were looking for a neighbor's house and you entered into a shrine. And said, sorry sir, I didn't even know this was a shrine. He will tell you bye bye. And pity you because you are coming back. He knows that your life will... Just that you entered into a place. And yet we believe we are carrying the Holy Spirit. And we keep telling people, bless you. Good morning. You lay your hands on their documents. You do everything. And nothing changes. And men of God, we embrace people after service. And they say, sir, nothing is changing. Can I tell you this? Help me. The commodity we give people is not oil. What we give people is, I'm not saying those things are wrong. The real thing you give people is a transference of that divine life. That's what you give people. The divine life that you have is transferable. More than just power or anointing or bottle. You are not a man of God just because you are speaking. Even when you are silent, you are still a man of God. Ten years, doors have not been opened. Okay, I'm going for a meeting now. God bless you. He touched you. He touched God. 
It is true. He did not just touch a body of his pastor. He made contact with heaven. And you tell him, go. This gentleman will go. And what refused to run away from him sees two people coming. Not just one person again. The yokes. They didn't run away because they saw only one person from that family. But now because you made contact. Listen. This is why I'm, I don't feel bad. This is a pastor's meeting. Honestly, it should be an embarrassment for people to be in a church for a long time and nothing is happening to them. No. 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 Even though I'm giving an example, if this man's life remains the same, I will go for a retreat. I'm telling you. If this man's life actually remains the same. It's not pride. I'm giving you an understanding. It's not the oil that comes on you on ordination day. It's the revelation. God dwells in a man. I was not born like this. Your parents may still be alive. But my goodness is the mystery of godliness. This is how to be a blessing. You are not a blessing just when you give people money or donation or something. That's wonderful. But the superior way to be a blessing is get God to people. When they are flying you for a program, they are not just bringing a man. When people honor you, they are not just honoring a body. They are honoring the presence. It's like the ark of God. You have come. I truly believe what I'm telling you with all my heart. I really believe it. When I understood this, help them. I made a covenant with God that I will never, nobody will meet me twice to be changed. No. You can meet me to keep growing, to keep getting blessed. But if you meet me, you, it's impossible for your life to remain the same. Many of us have been preachers for a long time. We keep preaching and nothing is happening. You are sincere. But that consciousness has not released the reality of the life of God within you. I'm not talking of boastful carrying yourself up. That is not where power comes from. It comes from a sincere revelation. Nobody will ever look at you as a cause to them. How, in what way are you a cause? So when someone says, Pastor, come to my shop, just come and drink minerals. The person is wise. He knows what he's doing. He's not bringing a man's hand to hold a bottle of um, uh, malt or whatever it is. He's saying, if there is a way, let me be Obed Edom. Please, act, come. come. Now, can I tell you this sincerely? Preachers, we come but we just go as men of God. And we go there and nothing happens. Their lives remain the same. Look at Jesus. He walked as the living presence of God. You don't have to act superhuman. You are superhuman. Can I tell you this? I don't mean, please don't feel bad. I'm not, I'm not insulting you and, and I'm, not, I'm not, I know people are following all over the world. But only God can tell the number of patients, the number of sick people, the number of communicable diseases by reason of the kind of ministry God has given me that I've contacted all my life. If I were lying about the divine life, believe me, I would have died by now. I have prayed for people that I have been warned. Be careful. Be careful. I command that spirit to leave that gentleman now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please pay attention. Listen to what I'm telling you. John G. Lake understood this in Spokane. He understood it. Believers in this end time, if we don't pay attention, our churches will become empty. If we cannot bring the reality of God to people. People are tired of stories. They want to see the reality of the, the reality of the life of God. 
I am one with God. One with God. One with God. Let me tell you something that happened in my house. I was expecting a visitor and the person came which maybe it was for someone to pray for and it was a family. And then when they came, I sat at the parlor and they had told me they, had, they were coming and I was expecting them to have opened the door. And for some minutes, the door was not open. And I, hope, I was hoping everything was all right. And I was hearing, it was like someone was hitting, the, I said, it can't be the dog. I went and opened the door and there were the people on the floor just trying to open the door. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying that, you see, when you carry God, you are not the only one who should know. If you are the only one who knows that you carry God, something is wrong with what you are carrying. Listen, women, do you cook anywhere in the house? No, there is a kitchen. But if it's a serious meal, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody in that house should suspect you are cooking something. The fragrance from the kitchen, no matter where you are, it has a way of going to the living room. You can suspect what is in the kitchen without going there. Can I tell you this? When Moses encountered the face of God, the people did not need to climb up again to see God. They just needed to look at the man who had seen God to see God. Reject this natural living. This common sense living. There is nothing wrong with your mind. But there is a superior dimension of living. You cannot excel doing end time ministry. Just acting like a counselor. You need more than that. You need to act like a genuine solution. And it is in your oneness with God. How do you know the sick will be healed? How do you know life will change? You don't wait until they testify to be sure they were blessed. You can know they were blessed. Ah, this is what Jesus taught the disciples. And when Peter and John looked at the man, he said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have. There is something. We do not see any physical thing being given. I have life. The life of God is transferable. Such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let me pray for someone here. Whatever has kept you ordinary in your Christian life, that you are unable to walk in the reality of your divine life, I pray, let fire from heaven right now bring an activation to that divine life. Begin to walk in the reality of that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to walk in the reality of that dimension. Hallelujah. Listen, I remember one time I was told the story that Archbishop Benson either holds as someone who I think his face was deformed. And he was in a hurry and they brought the person. And he lifted the face to heaven. He said, God, this man was made in your image. If this is how you look, leave him like that. Your Bible that you have kept in your room, that we preach with every Sunday, is full of wonders here. Ordinary men. These are not parables. Men who walked upon the face of the earth like gods. Not in pride, but in confidence. I'm not alone. God is with me. There is an advantage. My oneness with Christ. Listen to me. There are people who, are, who have been respected in this nation because of those they know. Not because of who they are. I saw that photo. You mean you and this man? Yes, by the privilege of God's mercy. You were with him? That photo was not photoshopped. Yes, I was with him. All of a sudden, your perceptions about you change. You ate with this billionaire. You were in his house. Yes, I was there. 
and then matters become worse if the person's call comes while they are talking. He's still the same person calling me. Ah, that oneness is settled. What if while you are talking about Jesus, he shows up too? What if while you are telling the sick he heals, he comes to heal them? What if while you are telling the oppressed he delivers, he comes to deliver them? What if you are telling the poor that he can lift, he comes to lift them? Help this woman please. I question your relationship when the one who loves you does not show up in defense. I question your relationship. Watch this. Sir, when you were honoring the first lady, even though she's not here, but while they saw the picture, everyone was celebrating her. Probably she may be following, listening now, and feeling very happy. She's not here physically speaking, but her relationship with you was preserved, and the honor accorded that relationship was still communicated. It is not because you cannot see Jesus that shame has come to you. It is because there is something. Your pastor taught you something this morning. Look how we talk about him. We sing about him. We claim we are one with him. We cry and we call him. Lord, come and change lives. Lord, come and bless people. And then at the end of it, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God. Amen. I'm not talking about falling down. No. I hope you know that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that someone who comes to service insulting God and insulting men of God by the time the fire from the worship comes. The man of God has not even come up because those who are worshiping know that they are not musicians. They are acts. They are priests. The opening of their mouth. They are not singing special numbers. They are communicating life. As they hold that mic, it does not matter whether the person is leading or backing up. It doesn't matter. Presence is presence. That someone who came to church broken one song when the instrumentalists know that they are not just playing instruments. They are releasing life through the instruments. Everything in the church should worship. Everything in the church should release the presence of God. When the ushers, please help me with one envelope, one. If the ushers are passing, thank you, sir. If the ushers are passing this, I know it's time for offering, but because my hand touched it, backing the pastor up while he ministers to you, someone can just hold it and know what happened. Something happened. Who is this usher? You just passed an offering envelope. No, you passed your secret place with you too. Listen, this is how workers should be trained. You are not just workers or staff. You are priests. You are acts first. Can I tell you this? You return back home and gather your children and say, listen, you are not just young teenagers in this house. Let me teach you something. You are representations of heaven. You carry the presence of God. The very Shekinah of God. The Bible says, this is the record that God, so we know where it came from. God had given us the way eternal life, the life of God. And he said, this life is in his son. Whosoever has the son, has that life. I have the life. I have the life. I really do. I have the life. It's an indestructible life. It's a life of grace and power and effulgence of heaven in and through your life. Not by arrogance and boasting, but by a sincere communication of this reality, it is true. I walk with this consciousness. I'm not only anointed when I dress for a service. Anytime you meet me, even when I'm joking, the anointing is there. 
if there is ever a need in your life, that anointing will meet that need even while we are joking. Can I tell you this? Nobody should come near your life and go back the same again from today. Nobody. Nobody. Some of you with this consciousness, you can run back to your homes and say, Mama, there is a conference ongoing. I know you are coming in the evening, but right now, let me show you what I've learned. Bring your hands, let's pray. And you hold Mama's hand, and as you are holding the hand, the phone is ringing. And he says, I've been trying to reach this family for five years. Send me an account number. And your mother said, what has happened? I brought the presence of God. Can I tell you this? Please look up. When you know this, you will not let society try to make you relevant by doing things and compromising. You have to do a certain thing to be... No, you have been accepted in the beloved. The highest and the noblest position on earth is being one with Christ. The only other position higher than it is being a monarch or the position after it is being a monarch. Please help the person. Our time is up. We must respect the time. Wherever it is, we can touch. I, I, I apologize, but let me... Please sit down. Let me just jump this. Can I just share with you in the next five minutes three three areas that every leader and every man of God must excel in in this end time. These are three areas that Satan is prepared to attack in this end time. Number one, the first area where the devil wants to attack in the life of ministers, in the life of a church, is in the area of church growth. Please pay attention. The area of church growth. Can I tell you this? Satan hates men coming together to call upon the name of the Lord. If you are a minister of the gospel, please hear this. The moment you name the name of Christ and God has a portion, an assembly or a people, whether you like it or not, you are a principal subject of attack. Because there is nothing more frustrating for a man of God than to be sincerely called and anointed. But then, the people who should hear what God has told you to say are not there. One of the indices that measure the health of a man of God and the health of his assignment in ministry is that there must be people who come to hear what the Lord has told you to say. It is proof that he sent you. If God is the one who sent you and there is nobody placing a demand on that call, something is wrong mark chapter one let's look at the ministry of jesus a few minutes and i'm done i apologize for the time mark chapter one i tell you my spirit is fired up this morning i came to challenge you Let me cut a few verses because of time. I would have wanted us to read everything. But Mark chapter 1, 2, 3 is an expression of the ministry of Jesus. Let's start from verse 21 for the sake of time. Mark chapter 1. This is in Capernaum. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, sir. I've been given a few more minutes. Can you celebrate your pastor for me? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Left for me, you will remain here. Let me tell you sincerely. I have, I have the grace you will remain here till. Do you know this is how in the 60s and 70s, the, the revival fire, this was how Papa Hagen and this people, they would sit down every day for 30 days, 60 days. You would eat there and keep the plate there and continue the teaching. The earlier, I'm not saying we'll do that, of course, times have changed. The early apostles would teach till someone would slip and fall down and die. They would raise the person back and continue the teaching. Let me use the time I was given. And they went into Capernaum. Please look up. 
And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Hmm. And they were astonished at his doctrine. So we know that Jesus taught and we know what he taught. Doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a body of truth allocated to make you become something exact. Doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in that synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. We know now that there are two kinds of spirits. Clean spirits and unclean or demonic spirits. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. That means there was an effect in his message. He preached and there were many audiences, not just men or many audience that were listening. It was not just men. Spirits too were following the message. And one said, no, I have to cry out. This message is too hot. Is your message hot enough to penetrate from the earth realm into the realm of the spirit? You are sharing and you are teaching and something is happening right from the realm of the spirit. People are being delivered. Chains are breaking because what you are teaching is truth. Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee whom thou art, the Holy One of God. Uh -huh. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had told him, he cried with a loud voice, and then it came out of him. Next verse. The Bible says they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Look how powerful this is. What happened? Immediately. Not two weeks later. Not three weeks later. There is a way God spreads his influence across a territory. There are things that must be done. And the results can be immediately. Immediately, his fame spread throughout all the region of Galilee. We are still reading. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Uh -huh. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of fever. And anon they tell him of her. This is Jesus now. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately, we see that word again, immediately, the fever so fever is not a Nigerian issue. It's not an African. It's been there for a long time. And Jesus did something about it. That means the church can do something about it. The Bible says, And when it was evening, and the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, possessed with devils, next verse, and the city, the city, you see how we take cities. And the city was gathered together at the door. What were they coming to do? To bear witness, to see. Jesus taught. He ministered with life. There were sick bodies that testified. There were miracles and signs and wonders that came in attestation to the truthfulness of what he was teaching. As a result, his fame went round, the whole city came back. The Bible now says that the city was gathered together at the door and he healed many, please pay attention, that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils, suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Uh -huh. And in the morning, now look at him, with all these fearful results, Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. You are seeing the key to church growth here. The key to excelling in ministry. It tells us his public life. It also tells us his private life. He went out to pray. He departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Next verse. The Bible says, and Simon and they that were with him did what? Followed after him. You know you are producing results because you never walk alone. There must be someone following you as a witness to the fact that the hand of God is upon you. 
And when they had found him, may this be someone's testimony. Please read with me. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men. How many men? All men means professionals, laymen, intellectuals, all age ranges, all races, all men seek for thee. This is what Satan does not want to see. Beloved co-laborers in the gospel, let me encourage you. Our world has become so harsh over the things of God. There seem to be so many options right now. And many men of God are under pressure. It's like they are under pressure in defense of the call of God upon their lives. Can I tell you, there are principles that when you walk with, there is no shame for you as far as the people who will come to attend to what God has told you. We are not the first to start this. The Bible says where the carcasses are, it says there the eagles will gather. I came in yesterday and the airport, your airport was so busy. I saw private jets everywhere and people had come because I was told that there are governors who came in for a meeting and I saw other people who were there there were those freelancing around there were those who came to dance to greet them and I said can you imagine every time there is something worth the attention of people they will give attention to it if people ignore you and ignore your church they are simply telling you something you should pay attention to guess what they are saying I may not be in doubt as to the fact that God called you. But I need to see the evidence that parallels that which happened in the life of Jesus. I need to see you preach the gospel with power. This is the key to church growth. I need to see you teach the word with authority. I need to see a demonstration of the reality of the efficacy of the truth that you are teaching. Through the healings, through the miracles, but more importantly, through the transformation of the mind of the listeners. People should sit down under you and on listening to you, there should be that transition in their lives. The greatest miracle is not just physical healing. Believe me, the greatest miracle secondary only to salvation is transformation. No matter who is healed, no matter who is delivered, if their minds are not right, their lives will remain wrong. This was the miracle that happened to the madman in Gadara. When he was healed, he came and sat with Jesus and the Bible says, the other people came and they met him seated in his right mind. Men can come but be in their wrong minds. And you know the law is that everything that follows you is a report card to what you believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. That means the way to drive what is following you is not to tell it go away. Change what you believe and what is following you will change. Everything that follows you is a report card. It's an attestation to what you believe. If failure, defeat is following you if weakness and mediocrity is following you they are not following you they are following your mindset and they've been mandated to honor that mindset you will drive them they will come back because they were instructed to be obedient so the way you drive these negative things is the teaching the accurate communication can I tell you this? The primary assignment of a shepherd to his congregation, according to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, I will give you shepherds after my heart, and that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That is the assignment of a shepherd. If you are after the heart of God as a pastor, as a shepherd, you must laboriously go through scripture and communicate doctrine. Doctrine that sustains the power to transform people. So an ordinary person just comes as a new convert. Comes out, receives the card. I should come back after one year and meet that person. Walking, serving the Lord. And I look at the person I say, how are you? I remember you. And he says, I remember you too. So tell me, what have you learned? Can I tell you this sincerely? Men and women of God, let's challenge ourselves. Can I call five people? Not here. Generally speaking. Can you go to any assembly and call five people at random? Ask them to stand. 
and examine them on the major doctrines of scripture you've been how long in this church or this ministry i've been here three years tell me what you know about prayer tell me what you know about redemption and righteousness tell me what you know about kingdom service tell me what you know about character Tell me what you know about love and passion for the kingdom. Can I be sincere with you? If we are to be honest in the name of the Lord, this, in this, this, this conference this morning, for many people, at best, if people really pass that test, it may be two over five. Something is wrong with the content of what we are teaching. Something is wrong with how we are teaching. Believers are not getting matured and they are not satisfied with what is happening. Remember, I'm teaching apostolically. I'm teaching the body of Christ. So you understand. We must examine what we are teaching. It is the word that makes men mighty. And if the word that is coming from our pulpit, if the word is weak, the people will be an expression of that weak word. Look how Jesus transformed ordinary men. Look at the ratio of impartation to teaching. Three years to one night. This is how Jesus mentored people. We have switched it over. And I thank God because God has granted me the grace to walk in all these things. But I tell you, when it is time for the word, you sit down. When you fall, you stand up and carry your barrow and keep writing. The ratio of impartation to teaching according to the ministry of Jesus was three years to one night but now we have flipped it over it is impartation three years and teaching one night how will people be you see people cannot grow so you have a lot of immature people carrying anointing around and they don't know what to do with it because the doctrine that brings stability is not there please I hope you are not offended. Forgive me, huh? If we really want to bring the church that brings glory to the name of the Lord, miracles don't mature believers. They only help their conviction. What matures believers is the accurate exegesis of doctrine. When believers are soundly mentored, methodically, they are taught the ways of God. Miracles are supposed to come after doctrine has been communicated. Then the people now see the validity. Now I have taught you that God prospers. I have also taught you the purpose of kingdom prosperity. Now the grace that empowers can come upon you. And it will now profit you and profit the house. But if all you receive is just an impartation for prosperity, that money will come and it will kill you. And it will not kill only you. It will kill many people in that church too. You see what, what happens? We win a lot of souls and when they come, they reappear and they come back. They are not occupying any position but they are freelancing around. And so Satan can easily find them. Discipleship is the name given to the system that brings maturity in believers. We must restore genuine discipleship. Nobody in any assembly should outgrow being mentored. Nobody in any assembly should outgrow being taught. There are no exceptions. Doctrine is for all. This is what our fathers taught us. That is the reason why their works last. We have laughed at some of them maybe because they didn't work in miracles as much. But there is stability. Some of the people who got born again under their ministry. You see your pastor here telling you he got born again. Here is the man who God used to bring him. And after how many years he is still standing. Go and find out the average harvest from our crusades. After two weeks, they are back almost worse than it was before. This is an attack that Satan is bringing on the end time church. I ask you to spare me a few minutes because I believe in my heart that this will be the opportunity to share this. Can I tell you this? When we get to the crusade ground, we don't talk too much because we are constrained with time. We just share the love of Jesus and allow the miracles come to, to prove that Jesus is Lord. And by that miracle and by the show of love and by the communication of the gospel, many come to Jesus. But when these people become saved and they now become part of the fold, there is no rushing with mentorship. 
Can I be sincere with you? There is a difference between teaching in a conference and building people. In a conference, you have one week or three days. And here right now, I'm trying to just teach everything in two minutes. But when I'm building my people, I'm not in a rush. They are here with me till Jesus comes. I will teach them methodically. Men of God, let's be careful. This pressure to bring Rema is why many people don't settle down to administer doctrine. There is a pressure among men of God. What are you repeating this faith thing again? I thought you did it in January. You teach it for as long as it needs to be taught. What you should be after is not just newness, but freshness. Freshness. Are you learning? This is how our... The body of truth that makes for the maturity of the believers is finite. You exhaust them and come back again. You exhaust them and come back again. Until it becomes the things that are most surely believed among us. There are fathers in this nation who have been saying the same thing for many years. They said it until we believed it after 10 years. If they had stopped at 9 years, we would not get it. When you go to Kenneth Higgins or Kenneth Copeland, in every 10 words you are going to hear the word faith or belief or word of God. They have been teaching this. They laughed at them and most of the people who laughed at them have died and gone. And they are still standing. You want church growth? Except we want to keep doing these gimmicks that people do. I, I, I love the body of Christ. And I'm not teaching from a standpoint of sarcasm. I have an apostolic call. You see, body of Christ, the alternative to this authentic principle of maturing believers is to play a lot of these things that we keep seeing around. That is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord. Manipulation becomes the only other alternative. But God is changing someone here. In the name of Jesus. What then is the principle of church growth? There are many. But basically, the key that brings people. Hear me. The gospel must be preached. To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. What is the gospel? The gospel is a revelation of the Father's love. Demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Man being the object of that love alongside creation to the intent that if we believe we are saved, it must be taught. We should not forget this. There are people who have not made altar calls in many assemblies in a long time. I don't say this out of sarcasm, but without altar calls, men will not be saved. And if men are not saved, Satan will find them. And when he finds them, he will use them and use them against the church. The work of an evangelist is not for evangelists. The work of an evangelist is for everybody who truly loves Jesus. So in all our conferences, our conventions, our church meetings, please, I beseech you by the message of God, we must give room for sinners to find Jesus. Win yourself from the embarrassment of saying, I made an altar call three weeks straight. Nobody came. So what? Do you cry when you open your shop and for three hours nobody has come? The fourth person that can come can buy everything in that shop. You must carry that mentality. Could it be that after three weeks of nobody coming out for altar call, by the next week the person who comes will become the next resident pastor of that church in the next ten years? What if Billy Graham was not saved? What if Baba Deboye was not saved? What if Bishop Oyedeko was not saved? What if Pastor Paul Adifarasan was not saved? What if Papa Kumuyi was not saved? What if these men were not saved? Think of the myriads of salvation that were in them. At the point they were making the altar call. I know what I'm sharing is old school. But that's why it's powerful. It has been tested for a very long time. I am both new school and old school, oh, depending on which one. Yes. When it has to do with the gospel, don't change it. Don't remove that ancient landmark. Let pe Can I tell you something with people sincerely? I tell you this by God. Members are not stupid people. 
they will gauge the pastor and gauge your level of spiritual seriousness. If they, they have their A rating, A plus, they have A minus, they have B, they have C, the next one is F. They look at you. When they find out that this man is there for my spiritual growth, they know where to stay when they really want to grow. When they want to enjoy themselves, they know where to stay. When they are backsliding and they don't want interruption, they know where to stay. May your church be where people stay when they really need God. Church growth. Please sit down. And let me say this. Don't be careful so that you don't join some of these ignorant statements that said it's not all about crowd, it's not all about people. Be careful. Without the people, what are we doing? God so loved the people and, and we are talking about where should the people be? Can I tell you, the more a society has people in the house of God, the more they can hear the truth. The church is the only institution that has the authorized manual for transforming society. The parliament only has part. The law court only has part. Only the church has the authorized the, the manual for transforming men. The court cannot save men. It can arrest, it can prosecute. The parliament can pass policies. Does a parliament cast demons? Does a parliament heal the sick? Does a bank raise the dead? This is why Satan is isolating the church to fight the church. And one of the ways the devil is fighting the church is to make sure that membership starts declining. Thank God for online. Thank God for those wonderful things, the, the reach of the internet. But can I tell you this? If you are a man of God, pray that God will bring people and not a few. I am telling you this. If the space is there, push the building, open it, expand it. The building is not, it didn't come from heaven, it was man-made. Break that building and open it and give God space. For as long as there is one sinner still left in Enugu, there is one more person who loves Jesus. Let them find their way to the church. I came and I saw many overflows here. I said, may God bless the man of God. Because you expect that more people will come. Please hear what I'm telling you. If we do not take the issue of souls and church, may God forbid it that a season will come in Enugu when the mo most of the people in this place don't go to church. That would be terrible. This was the mistake the West made. They made this mistake 20, 30, 40 years ago. Now all those young boys who did not go to church are now the leaders. And they are only doing what they know. Yes, we were not raised to honor God. Don't come here and come and talk to us about God. Every generation respects what they agree with. If they didn't grow with God as part of their mind control system, don't assume that they will later just come. Train up a child, he says. A child here does not just mean the one you gave birth to physically. Train up a spiritual child in the way he should grow. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. May House on the Rock keep expanding in the name of Jesus Christ. May House on the Rock in Enugu continue to find many who come to Jesus. It is called a house that is on a rock. That even at these times of turbulence, it is my prayer that all across the length and the breadth of Enugu, that the angels that gather the harvest, that they will bring people from everywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for every other church that is represented in this land, please be intentional and go after souls. Look at me. I don't mean to offend you, but let me tell you where souls are. There is a place they are. Souls are not just in another man's church. Souls are in the beer parlor. You must go there. Souls are in many, many places that need the power of God. Do not just move and want to bring people and bring people who are already matured and processed. Bring people and start from the beginning. He said, go to the byways. Compel them to come and be ready to build them. A good leader does not just make followers. Listen to me carefully. A good leader transforms followers 
into leaders like your pastor has done and then he makes those leaders agents of change this is what dr miles monroe taught us an attack on church growth number two i may not have the time to teach it i'm sorry the second thing i'm preaching this from the depth of my heart because i share the burden of your man of god i know that he organized this conference and especially this session because many of you have been praying as to why things are not working in this end time can i be sincere with you if you are not about souls if you are not about revealing jesus if you are not about teaching doctrine if you are not about discipleship be ready for empty pews be ready for empty pews i vowed a vow under god sir that i will never gather the people of god to come and waste their time from morning see people come six hours seven hours before church starts and they sit down waiting patiently and ministry starts and I waste people's time? No. The ones who taught us and mentored us did not teach us to waste people's time. They taught us to carry the responsibility of a visionary whilst you are teaching people. It doesn't matter whether it's at a house cell level. It doesn't matter whether it's at a, a departmental level. It doesn't matter whether it's within the larger house. There must be seriousness and intention given to everything that is being done. The next attack is on the supernatural, signs and wonders. Satan is gradually, gradually bringing believers. John chapter 4 and verse 40. Let's look at 29 and then we'll go to 48. John 4, 29, then we'll go to 48. Satan is fighting the supernatural in the church. Let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you sincerely. If we throw away the supernatural... This was the story between the woman at the well. Remember the woman with five husbands who had the sixth one while she was talking with Jesus? The Bible says after she encountered Jesus, she ran. What did she say? Come see a man who told me the things I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Next verse, very quickly. Next verse, 30. The Bible says they went out of the city and came to him. Why? Because of the impact of what happened to her. She was a popular woman whose problem was known by all. As soon as Jesus solved her problem, she was too grateful to keep quiet. 31. In the meanwhile, the disciples were praying and they said, Master, eat. And he said to them, I have meat that you do not know anything about. Next verse. The disciples said to one, has anyone brought this that he has eaten? And he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish. Uh -huh. You know, he said this, are there not four months? Let's go to what, what's the next um, 48 for the sake of time. Just go straight to verse 48. Jesus said, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe except ye see signs and wonders can i tell you this people of god do not keep quiet with the marvelous things god is doing in the life of people let the city know that god healed people not exaggerated testimonies not lies genuine miracles that happen if you keep quiet you are shutting the manifestation of the glory of god Testimonies are powerful tools that glorify the name of the Lord. The Bible did not keep quiet over the things that Jesus did. In fact, here's what it says in John chapter 20. It says, many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are recorded that you might believe, and that in believing, you will have eternal life. Testimonies are more than just an attestation that a man is anointed. You are letting people know that Jesus is alive. 
we have to keep bombarding the streets of Enugu with what Jesus is doing. So that when people sit eating outside, their discussion is, did you hear what God did? We hear that a madman just entered during the service in House on the Rock. And without even prayer, it was even the usher receiving him. That madness just disappeared. And that now the person has become a chief usher. While they are talking about it, another person says, oh, that is even an old story. Come and hear about a woman who for eight years, she's not had a child. Just last week, she gave birth to triplets. And someone says, last week is too late. Let me tell you the one that happened yesterday. That a whole family that had HIV, from father to last born, all of them went for a test and nothing happened. Can I tell you this? There is something about human beings and there is something about Africans. They always go to where the news is happening. Even if to verify. They say, no. I have to come and find out. What did you say? The Lord is lifting people. I hear that everyone who comes to that church in less than two weeks is having a job. It's, I don't believe it, but let me come. They are still welcome. Because when that, God knows how to prepare for those kind of people. Because their testimonies will be more powerful. They doubted openly. So when they acknowledge openly. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I will be lying to you today as a man of God. If I tell you those miracles have not played a role in the growth and what God has done in and through my life. It will be childish to begin to tell you the testimonies and the things that God has done. Many of them will not even be believable. That is the truth. But all I can say is to him be the glory for the fearful things that he continues to do. Fearful indeed. Number three, and we'll pray. The third thing I see the devil attacking in the life of churches is their finances. I will end with this. Apostle, finances don't matter. Keep going. There's nothing I have to tell you. You just keep going. I assure you by God, keep going. One day, one day, Time does not change anything, but time reveals. Oh, time reveals. And time is such a brutal teacher. It can teach men a lot. You know, for a long time, this issue of money in the church, there are two sides to it. I'm, I'm working on borrowed time, so forgive me. We're not teaching finances here. Just have a few minutes and we'll pray. I hope I didn't waste your time. Please pay attention to this one. If you've been sleeping, wake up. God is speaking now. Can I tell you this? I have seen more people compromise. One time, God's servant Bishop David Oedipo was talking to us and here's what he said. The last thing he said was, Beware of the God of gold. Shocking. Beware of the God of gold. Beware of the God of gold. I had that and it drummed my spirit. I have seen finances lead people to leave their convictions. The lack of it. More preachers have compromised because of finances than any other thing. They may start in truth preachers of righteousness. Let rent bills start coming. Generator fuel, diesel starts coming. Payment of staff within the ministry. And then you find out that people continue to do all kinds of ungodly strategies. If you want to truly be a preacher of righteousness in this end time, can I tell you, you must obtain grace and wisdom from God to sort your finances, both personal and ministerial. Because if ministerial is solved and your own personal one is not solved, you are not entirely free. I have, listen, I have counseled people by the grace of God who told me, Apostle, I can't even pray again. Where did the attack come from? Finances. Do you know what it means for a man to come and be preaching perhaps multiple services and as he's preaching, the text coming in his phone is his landlord. Just finish and wait for me. He will come and meet me there. And if for any reason, maybe he wants to check his scripture. I know you are laughing, but there are some of you who know what this means. 
I know a man of God whose wife refused that she was not going to be following him again for, for service. You, you can imagine what that does to the church. Because of the sheer anger. Why would God keep failing us like this as a family? Is he alive? Jesus did not keep quiet over the issue of finances. He paid attention to the financial needs of the people. He showed that he cared for the welfare of people because after preaching and doing everything, he said, don't leave them to go that way. Please give them something to eat. They said, we don't have enough. He said, I will do something about it. But the people should eat. They should not only hear and eat the spiritual meal. God cares about our welfare. He cares about our well-being. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound towards us, the Bible says, so that we, having all sufficiency in all things, the Bible says, there is a relationship between all sufficiency and good works. If you do not have all sufficiency, there is a limitation to the good works that you can do. Many years ago, sir, we went for a crusade. Preached my heart out and preached Jesus. But we did not have money for the transport of the people back. We didn't have money to pay for where we stayed. And we didn't have money to pay for the, the bus that was going to take the people back to Zari at that time. I had to tell them, just go. True story. We negotiated with the people to go and wait somewhere in Zaria. I told them by the time the bus is getting there, after maybe about six hours of the journey, your money will be waiting for you there. Everybody went after a powerful crusade. Miracles and Jesus was glorified. But this finance thing, the sound people who we rented sound from, at the time, it was 150,000. It looks small now. But my brother, 150,000, even now, it's not like it's exactly so small. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Do you know what it means for a preacher who stood and shouted for hours about a supernatural God? Now you are standing with the sound guys that came all the way from Kaduna to that place. You shouted about the supernatural God. They were setting that sound in the crusade. They saw the sick people healed. You dressed in suit and you finished everything. And now they are gone and the people say, please, our money. Where is that God who sent you? He could open a blind eye and he could not give us our 150,000. This your God has something. Which one is easier? To open a blind eye to heal a crippled man or to give you 150,000? And you see, at that point, no, I'm, I'm not sharing this. It's past. It's an old story. But I stood there wondering, God, but what is this? This is not fair. I had to write an agreement with them. God is my witness. I had to go around and look for someone to help me with 20,000 to give them. I said, just go. There are times that you lock the door, you are not praying. You are just walking around. Shali iskede barasku bahaskadi abagatosi. And you are just sitting there. And the next time you are, you are on the window. Lord, we need 200 million for this building. Lord, we need 10 million or whatever for this bus. And yet you have a conference to preach in. And you have a, a eight sermons to come. And then your child comes with PTA letter. And you see that PTA letter, you almost will call it an evil report. Because of what was written there. Oh, because of the pandemic and the times, we have increased the school fees. Everything has increased except your finances. And you are there. Can I be honest with you? That's when Satan comes. What he told you 10 years ago and he said, God forbid, I will not do it. He will come again. Satan is a master at maximizing desperation. He will come to you. You are a lady and you said, I will not compromise. I will live for Jesus. Until everybody calls you and says... I don't know this your thing you are doing. I don't know the name of what you are doing with God. And some unbeliever guy will come and tell you, listen, I'm not born again, no. I don't fear God, but I have money. He said, oh no, God forbid, it's not you I'm talking about. After five years, by yourself, you won't know when you will carry your phone and say good afternoon. 
If we don't teach the church this aspect, we will keep losing our precious people. The devil will wait for us to prepare precious people. And the devil will come and just carry them using the God of gold. I'm wrapping up. Let me show you something. Genesis 42, verse 1 and 2. It's a new season. It's a new season. When Jacob saw that there was corn, where? The location is wrong, but the supply is correct. I have a problem with the location, but I need corn. There is nothing wrong with the corn. The problem is where to get it. Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do we look upon one another? Verse 2. This is a prophet speaking. A man of God without corn. Behold, I have heard that there is corn in a wrong location. But there is nothing we can do. Get up and go thither and buy for us from there. Why? So that we may live and not die. The only thing that takes Israel to Egypt is hunger. Hunger. When there is hunger, even if you are a prophet, you will find your way to Egypt. Could that be why many men of God who started well Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Just go ahead and pray in the spirit. Go ahead and bless him in the spirit, inside and outside. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, our Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jehovah, we praise you. Lift your hands and worship him. Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. Jehovah, Jehovah, sing Jehovah. We praise your name. Sing Jehovah. We praise you. Jehovah. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Bless his name. La branda baraba sika tabala da 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 bosh. Rata bambres kabala da bosh. Come on, pray in the spirit, inside and outside. Le baba rasa baba karianda balada bai. Rata baba koresi bandi kalianda prosta bai. Rata baba 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 baba. Rapa da baza palianda raba kade balada bosh. Rapos gebarian tabas kalinda boza pariataya. Ratapos gabare gede balaraba koprende gede deosh. Pray in the spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. We glorify your name. 
We bless your name. We bless your name. Pray a prayer and say, Lord, change me tonight. Change me tonight. Grant me revelation. Grant me access. Empowerment by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let my ears be open to hear the sounds of the spirit. Let my eyes be open to understand the visions of the spirit. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And soon you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Soon you'll understand that the Lord is here. Sing, open your eyes. Lord, we open our eyes tonight. Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Soon you lost it. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. That the Lord is here. That the Lord is here. That his presence is here. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Every word that proceeds, the proceeding word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but when the rhema of God comes, it comes with an ability. It empowers you, equips you, energizes your spirit. And then when you begin to understand his ways, the Bible says he showed the nation of Israel his act. But to Moses, he taught him how to do business in deep waters. And this is what God is showing us. The ways in the spirit. The patterns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, I need you to know that what God is doing in our lives in this place will last and we will salvage this generation. God is showing us his ways. Showing us his ways. Let me show you something. In, in ancient times, for many of you who have watched films and movies that have to do with war against kingdoms. Every kingdom is built and there are certain doorways that even the citizens of the kingdom are not told. When certain conditions of war comes, only the kings and the members of the cabinet know those ways there are regular ways the big gates for passage do you understand but there are certain ways there are pathways that are not shown to ordinary people lest they reveal it to their enemies because the regular citizens were careless people and whether in the bid to do their agriculture they could reveal only the king and a few select people who have demonstrated their citizenship they are shown that when you go beyond at the back of this kingdom built in the fence there is something that looks like a wall it's not just a wall when you look at it when you come close you begin to find out that i have always been looking at it like a wall but there is an exit so when the time gets bad the king can say you know where it is lead the people through the other way this is what god is showing us on common pathways in the spirit so that you will walk and navigate through a spiritual principle that men cannot understand when there is famine and satan brings all kinds of depression you will say there is a way he showed me in the secret and job understanding he said there is a path where even the eyes of the vulture has not seen he said there is a road where the feet of the lion the king of the animals but he has not seen it these are virgin paths in the spirit that only the king knows and for as many who demonstrate interest in his agenda he will lead them 
ancient parts. This is what made kings kings. The ability to hold secrets. They were not weak people. They were not like today's politicians. You didn't vote them. They got their position by conquest. They reveal the dimension of insight and competence that gave the people trust to make them leaders. This is what God is doing and showing us. Pathways in the spirit. For underneath the sea, there is a kind of business that is only done in the deep. Shallow men stand and then they cannot see. But they who have been refined by the spirit do business. In deep waters help us oh god tonight help us lord help us while i was praying this morning i saw a big shofar a very big shofar shofar is a jewish trumpet and every time i see shofars in the spirit i know that god is announcing it was a Jewish custom that every time there was war or liberty or jubilee or anything, there were certain men who were called watchers and they would stand upon the watchtower of the city. Their job was to monitor the activities of the neighboring environment and they would feed the, the king and his cabinet back with all the reports and all of that about the security of the people. And if for any reason they detect chaos, they had on that watchtower a fireplace and the moment they ignite it it will alert the people that there is either danger or victory and they will blow the shofar now the shofar had different sounds according to seasons the citizens had been trained to understand the sound when they hear the sound and the number of times the shofar is blown then they understand that this is the purpose and when god showed me that i knew that god is about to do something but only they whose ears are opened by the Spirit. He says that let he that has an ear hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Tonight there will be great activations and impartations in the Spirit as I teach. The topic I'm about to teach is very key and very cardinal. Please take it seriously. I will show you a mystery in the spirit tonight that will grant you access to uncommon levels of insight and power and favor in the spirit hallelujah when the lord showed me this i was very amazed it's amazing when god leads you through pathways in the spirit and then he shows and when the word of god comes alive in your life then you are as amazed at the people who are looking at you hallelujah how many of you are ready to see something tonight one minute just pray a prayer and say lord cause my eyes to see oh for when he break the bread the bible says their eyes were open lord i pray that you activate us in the spirit tonight shima na 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 let us understand the patterns of the spirit. Pray and say, Lord, let the veil be taken from my eyes. Go ahead and pray. Zida Pariatam Dizalakabadia. We are taking a prayer series. Mandi Gabaria Sabarosa Tabali and Aradahe. Now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your mind. And then we will rejoice. As we crown in your righteousness, we celebrate your love and we hail you most high. 
we hail you most high we hail the lord we hail you most high we call you lord most high we call you lord most high Call you Lord Most High. I hail you. I worship you. I hail you Most High. Most High. Yeah. Most high for it has been given unto us to know the mystery Jesus Christ is the Hallelion of Israel Jesus Christ you're the Elelion of Israel. Jesus Christ is the Elelion of Israel. Jesus Christ, you're the Elelion of Israel. Jesus Christ, you're the Elelion of Israel. You're the Elion of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 1. Ma parazo sabande kariada. The seeing eyes and the hearing ears belong to the Lord. Grant us an encounter with the spirit of revelation tonight. There is an open heaven over us. Tonight is an unusual meeting. We've been building our spirits in the place of prayer. Can we just hold our hands and pray for five minutes? Just hold your hands all over the building, inside and outside. Just for five minutes, we're drilling ourselves for victory and glory. In the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, Rante koso sa prosta pariada da rabosa, rata kasin tala bosa, ratos ko pariada balada da bosa. Inside and outside, ratos ko prante kere balada da rabosa, rabo ka parikete balada ba, ranto sa ka parikete rekom se ko sa taliban, am prante ka da balada basa, rata ka ba 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 ba, rapate ko pasikete le ko sa tai. Rentos kipari katai, raka ba 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 ba. It's just for five minutes. Keep praying, keep praying, inside and outside. Let your incense rise. Rata shapare kete boza parianda. Raka ta ba 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 ba. Rato sose kete ba kariye katai. Mam pros ke parinte kasi kaya. Entre kete ba re 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 boza. Rapa roso pande pros kaba. The remnant of the house of Jacob shall bear root downwards and bear fruit upwards. They shall bear root downwards. Rabba baka taba rada bala kosataya. Rentos kele koshaba. Rabba kabrondo sabari kete. Rabba rikete barianta barada bosa. Rapaske brondo shaparieketa, rata barada rabosha, 
Reke poso se pereke telekosia. Ranta kosa se ke telekota. Rapa parakataya. Come on, pray. You will encounter the spirit of power. Power in the heavens. Power in the earth. Baseka parika tabala. Rata baseto se telebosha. Raposa parike telerere. Rasto poroso seketea. He make it his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire. Shata barabara karabosha. You're my glory, the lifter up of my hand. You're my glory, the lifter up of my hand. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. As we teach tonight, many of you will have visionary encounters where you will see Jesus walking in this place. Some of you will see angels. Some of you will encounter the spirit of power. Many of you will receive impartations and activations in the spirit. Ezekiel chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, I was among the captives by the river Sheba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw the visions of God. Stop. He said it came to pass at a certain time. There were captives who were sitting by the river, and Isaiah said something happened. I was sitting in captivity just like them. My God, there is such a strong presence. See, a strong manifestation of the angelic. Strong manifestation of the angelic. Mighty manifestations of angels activating, touching and quickening gifts and aligning us in the spirit. He said, I sat among the captives like one of the weak and helpless people. And suddenly, he said, over me, the heavens were opened. And when they were opened unto me, he said, I saw the visions of God. I saw the visions of God. Yeah. I saw the visions of God. When the heavens, oh my God, I see the manifestation of angels a manifestation of the angelic strong operation even outside i see a strong operation of the angelic for he will cause us to be strong i see things moving in the spirit like electricity you know how current passes that's what i'm seeing in the spirit glories in this place when you know the secrets of god you will know how to align to his ways ha. let's try to share something before the glory overwhelms us let's just be able to share something mm. verse 3 and the word of the lord came what he didn't say the word of the lord came he said the word of the lord came expressly under an open heavens unto Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzai in the land of the Chaldeans and by the river hmm. dear Lord such strong presence of his spirit 
God is so eager to set us on fire and to build us. For you will never be the same. Not in his presence. Sheba. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked and behold. A whirlwind came out of the north. A great cloud. And fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it. And out of the midst of it was like the color of amber. Out of the midst of the fire. And out of the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the appearance, the likeness of a man. And then he begins to describe the things that he saw. The Bible says that they were sitting in a land of captivity they sat by the riverside all of them lamenting crying about their helpless situations and suddenly the prophet looked and he said the heavens were open tonight if you want to title what i'm calling i'm calling it living portals living portals i'm teaching about spiritual portals Hello, Kim Madonna. 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 I'm hearing a song in the spirit. Holy are you Lord. Just keep playing. Holy are you Lord God Almighty. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Holy are you Lord God Almighty. Holy Just listen, let me sing it, please. Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, 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 are you Lord? God Almighty, can we join the choir in heaven? Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, 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 are you Lord?
Bible says the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. They are spiritually discerned. Listen. In the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit. There are portals. And there are doorways. That open men up. To uncommon dimensions of grace and insight in the spirit please follow me the bible says in genesis chapter 28 how that at a certain time jacob walked and when he got to a certain place didn't give him a, 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 a didn't give it a name yet he called it a certain place he said he fell asleep and he laid his head and while he slept, suddenly he realized that there was a portal that connected the heavens and the earth. Now, when you read the book of Genesis, his father Abraham had made a covenant and erected an altar at that point. And by sacrifice, had opened up a portal and a doorway. And when he came, he said he slept and he saw angels. There were activities linking the heavens and the earth. Activities. Are you following me now? Ezekiel, he was just sitting by the river at Sheba. Little did he know that that was a portal. Suddenly he lifted up his eyes and found out that there was no earthly limitation again. He began to see the visions of heaven. The man called Elijah knew the exact portal that would exit people out of the earth when it was time for him to go he knew it was just beyond jordan and when elisha followed him he went beyond jordan and he said now ask for your request because i'm about to leave suddenly there were chariots of fire where did they come from a doorway that harmonizes the natural and the spiritual and jesus functioned in this dimension in the book of acts chapter one the bible says he knew the exact mountain and he stood there and the moment he finished speaking to them he started rising up gravity could not hold because there was a portal portals and open heavens are so important and necessary this is what is responsible for the unusual manifestation of god's presence when you access a portal there is a place called the meridian falls and it was said that the meridians prayed non-stop 24 hours for 100 years till today when you get to that place whether you are spiritual or not you will begin to see angelic activities for those of you who have been in this environment for a long time how many of you had the opportunity to pray at the court where we call the long tennis court because of the saturation of the prayers of the saints that place became a portal that every time you stepped into that place there seemed to be a continuous activity solomon dedicating the temple said lord in other words let this place be a portal that forever there be a continuous interaction with the heavens and the earth that wherever across israel whoever turns to this temple that their prayers be granted because this is a portal the ability to become that portal is my message tonight a short exhortation that you can come to a point in the spirit where you become a living portal where the portal is not just a geographical location but you as the temple of the most high built you can become a living portal where every time you move there is a continual flow there is an activity he said as a result of that open heaven the word of the lord came expressly 
insight in the spirit on common understandings in the spirit where you become a leading carrier and a dispenser of his glory and everywhere you go you carry that atmosphere and so you become like the ark that was taken to the house of Obededom. Wherever you are, the glory is. In the glory, I will stand. I will stand and lift my hands. In the glory, I'll receive every miracle you have for me there were certain geographical locations in the earth that when men found their way to they suddenly were not in this realm again it it harmonizes the realm of the spirit and the physical realm physical locations here upon the earth and that's the reason why every time God wants to encounter a man, God tells him where the portal is. He says, go, wait for me there. Why will God not just meet with men anywhere? He says, above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you and I will relate with you face to face. Every time he would send people, go to a certain place. Go to a certain place. Go to a certain place. These places seem to carry on common levels of the presence of God. That's the place where he calls Mount Zion. He gives us an example of the activities that happen. He says, ye are come to Mount Zion. And in Mount Zion, there is an activity of innumerable company of angels. That is where the spirits of just men fellowship. And the firstborn himself mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king the lord told me that we pray that we become living portals living portals careers that function under open heavens let me tell you something when the heavens of heavens is open over you i'm not just talking about the realm of the spirit are you listening to me when the heavens is open over you you will step into uncommon levels of insight understanding he said the word of the lord came expressly lack of insight is a proof that the heavens are closed over a man for every time you stay under open heavens there should be a continual flow of light because you are standing close to him that is light and light means access and revelation where visions no longer just become prophetic activities but it becomes part of your life he was seeing what they could not see we live in a generation where men cannot see we have men with two eyes and two ears they cannot hear the sounds when the shofar blows they cannot see and understand the doorways and the pathways in the spirit. But even in this prayer series, that a man can live under open heavens. He said, how that when Jesus came out of the waters, the heavens were opened. When the heavens were opened, we never have any record in the Bible that the heavens closed over him. And he functioned in miracles. The Bible tells us in the book of John that the miracles Jesus performed, the books in the whole world cannot contain it. It was just a sample that was given unto us that we should believe. It was said, Bible history has it of Nathaniel, that a certain time a king had a demon living in him. And Nathaniel, who had become a real Nathaniel, the disciple, he came and met the man. He casted out the devil and brought out a dragon out of the man. A living dragon, Bible history men who dislodged the powers of darkness when that portal is open over you there is no recession when that portal is open over you favor becomes your lifestyle 
It's not a favor that comes periodically. Are you listening to me? When that portal is opened, you will function in power and grace. You will perform more miracles unconsciously than you will consciously. One great man of God, as I was told, there was a herbalist who was threatening people in a particular environment. And then, people had been running away and the man of God just went. This is what he did. He entered the place and he looked at the herbalist. He said, all the demons in him leave. And that was all. Hallelujah. I was told a story that happened at the redeemed camp. That there was somebody who was possessed by demons. And the pastors came around. They were praying and sweating for hours. How many left? And then he said, maybe 15 or 30. And then they keep praying. And then a white man was eating his banana. True life story. One who was a living portal. He was carrying the heavens with him. And when he saw them, he was wondering. He said, what is going on? And they said, they've been praying for hours. He laughed. And he said, Satan, go. Instantly. 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 No manifestations. It's our job that we become the living portals. That we manifest the characteristic of these geographical areas in our lives. If it is true that the word of God says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then it must be also true that we can become living portals. When you step into a place and stand. After a few minutes you see people responding in ways that... They suddenly become uncomfortable. You sit down near somebody who is having things to do with the devil. And you, you just step into your house and you see people parking out and leaving. You say, no, no, but I want to offer. You say, no, 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 I'm, I'm not interested. Leaving portals. Where your prayer is reduced from deliverance to worship and intimacy. Because you become a living portal everywhere there is darkness you step in the bible says the bible didn't say any prayer was made the ark was taken to the house of obededom suddenly he began to flourish things began to work out leaving portals where we become doorways where people come and meet you and say what is god saying you can be able to tell the language of the spirit part time understanding the ways of god and knowing what to do the children of issachar the bible says that they had an understanding of the times where you don't need to depend on people to hear what god is saying you are at par with the movement of the spirit when men see you you are riding the tides of the spirit you know how to meander your ways you know when god has stopped and has navigated and you turn and men say where are you going you say i'm following because the heavens have opened over me where there is nothing that crosses above your head that you cannot see when you get to that point you become a blessing to humanity because you become a true expression of christ not just in character but in power everywhere you are i have no apology for satan and anywhere i go death must leave because i represent life realize that you not only possess the resurrection and the life he lives in you he functions through you the only person who can behave exactly like jesus christ is the holy spirit and he lives in you the holy spirit is the only person who can replicate jesus his act his power that's why jesus gave him to us as a gift he represents the life of God in us. Where there is darkness, you not only come alone, you bring an atmosphere. You bring in the open heavens. And there is a flow of insight. There is a flow of power. There is a flow of idea. Someone just sits where you sat and suddenly finds out that he cannot find the cancer again. No prayer, no deliverance. Where someone can come to you and you just hold the person's checkbook by mistake and suddenly he gets a text message from someone sending funds to his account that they cannot account for. Do you believe what I'm sharing? 
Or are we just being spiritual? Hallelujah. Portals. Living portals. Where everywhere you are, you are walking in this consciousness. It's not just that you are carrying God. The heavens are open. From where Ejimi read Haggai chapter 1. The reason why the land is barren. The reason why it cannot produce is why. The heavens are closed. The heavens are closed over many tongue-talking believers. That's why they struggle fruitlessly and aimlessly. When the heavens are open over you, men will refuse to sleep just to bless you. Have you ever had that kind of testimony? Where a man cannot sleep. Daniel was about to be casted into the lion's den. They didn't know he was taking heaven into the den. The moment he stepped in, the lions could not do anything. That was exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. Where the animals could not harm them. He brought that Eden atmosphere. And the lion said, I remember that there was once an atmosphere like this where we coexisted with men no violence the bondage of corruption was lifted suddenly he stepped in and he had a nice time with the lions the exact same thing happened to the three hebrew boys they stepped into the fire and they brought in the portals of heaven do you believe you are not just an ordinary person this is not just the issue of anointing. Are you listening to me? I have a burden tonight in my heart that the least person among us becomes if you are in a man's house and after 24 hours things do not change. Things do not, things are not transformed. You are an embarrassment to the kingdom. Are you hearing me? Inside and outside. I'm challenging you tonight. Because the Bible says that river flows from the east side. It said wherever the river goes to, the fishes that are dead come alive. Where men begin to look for you and say, please don't pay for a house. I just want you to stay in my estate. We are tired of trouble. Can you come? We, we cannot see Jesus, but you are the closest person to him. Come. They say, ah, he's starting. They say, don't worry. I will just come someone will want to launch a car and say please come just use my car i they find ways of bringing heaven into their lives and when men are struggling others are running and looking for you you get to a point where you are noted for releasing blessings you buy something in someone's shop and the moment you leave the person gets sales that day that he has never gotten in a week. The day he sees you, he says, please just stay just for five minutes. Have you seen people like that that you want to be around them? Something happens to you when you are around them. You cannot explain. There is a, if, if you are in trouble and you see them, they come in with faith. They come in with hope and confidence. They don't shout. They tell you, I understand. They are speaking from a realm under an atmosphere that is open. Whenever they say, I'm praying for you, you jump. There are others that when they say they are praying for you, you don't, even, you don't think twice about it. You know they are just wasting their time. But there are others who say, well, I'm praying for you. And you are so excited because you are confident about their open heavens. It's time for you to function in your open heavens. Where you become a living proof. You become a demonstrator of the power of God. For where there is death and where there is darkness, you step in. My hands represent the hands of Jesus. My eyes represent the eyes of Jesus. I'm not an ordinary person. I am not just carrying his life. I'm carrying his atmosphere. His atmosphere. Eternal life is not just his life. So where it's not just his life, it's his atmosphere. The heavens are perpetually open over me. That's the reason why the disciples see Jesus function under an open heaven. That's why he didn't need to pray for three hours to activate the prophetic or to activate anything. He was living and they brought a, a woman from Nain. He meandered into a major miracle that many of us will fast for one year for. And he said, it's alright. Let the boy get up. 
when you function under open heavens you see situations that require your breakthrough will not tell you when they will come sometimes you're about to enter a bathroom suddenly you find out that there is an emergency but there's no cause for alarm heaven is in this place and you say satan take your hands take your hands one time bishop oyedeko went for a program and he stayed in a hotel and armed robbers were coming for him and he just wore his pajamas and was about to sleep and then he just heard by revelation that they were coming he laughed he opened his door and stood you know he held two of his hands and shouted in the hotel he said any of them that crosses a boundary they carry their dead body and they just entered and locked his door and that's how the people advised themselves and left to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness is not to be a noisemaker do you realize that if we become living portals we can change our territories hallelujah we can shift things we can transform things by the power of the holy spirit let me share with you a testimony i don't know if the man is here he called me some days ago and his wife was about to put to bed and they found out that the position of the baby the baby was assuming a very dangerous position hallelujah and he called me and then we you see when you are conscious of heaven you don't do things by your strength are you listening to me you know you are not alone and i said now in the name of jesus the bible says children are heritage from the lord not disaster from satan and i said child you know the right position you are a baby only physically in the spirit you have been foreknown you have been fashioned in christ you have common sense enough to adjust yourself i told that baby adjust yourself and be in the correct position and the man called me i saw him in chapel was it day, day before yesterday or three days ago and he said surprisingly they went back to do the scan and they found out the child complied with his position i wasn't speaking to him heaven was speaking to the earth when you understand this you will rule and you will reign see this is we are not teaching you these things to feel spiritual many of us the, the issue with many of us is we don't apply the things that we learn we just say wow church was nice today so what how does that change your life how does that change your environment you're in business step into your shop and begin to speak heaven is in this place when they call you and say things are not working say hold on i have a solution don't be humble about it you can do something about it and you step in and say in the name of the lord and suddenly like ezekiel the lord will open your eyes and you will see the angels of the lord responding to your prayer that's why we are praying that we be men and women who acclimatize ourselves to the spirit that we are so alive to the spirit that we are not just taken unawares by the things of life everywhere i go he is there with me his presence is there with me that's why you never meet me on the street to pray for you or to do something i say hold on please can you accept god this way direct instruction i may not be confident in myself but i'm always confident that he is in this place he's in this place are you that confident i'm asking all of you a question right now can you be that confident how many of you tonight don't lift your hands can truly say anywhere i go i know he's going through me as i speak heaven is speaking through me as i lay hands on people if i hold your hands and i call you blessed i tell you even if i'm joking you are blessed i can't reverse it where everything you touch becomes blessed that's what we are enjoying in this place i have cried for years and said lord let he and i be a living portal that anywhere men come into they the first encounter is that they know that god is in the midst of his people you mustn't be told we mustn't pray in tongues when you sit down you know that there is an atmosphere that is not the same 
as the atmosphere in your departments and faculty but it's not enough to have this year you learn the principles and you take when you are sitting in front of your lecture you see your lecturer looking at you and while he's talking he comes back and looks at you out of the hundreds of students he keeps looking at you his senses are not understanding but his spirit is connecting he sees more than you it's an atmosphere and he says come and meet me in my office he says i've been watching you i read you just be a nice student the favor of the lord you're just sitting down and someone squeezes money and comes and puts it on your hand and says do you have clothes let me come and wash it what is he doing that's the exact same way they would have responded to jesus christ and because you have allowed yourself to be an expression of him you are permitted to enjoy the benefits that come with manifesting his life that we walk under open heavens where this anointing thing and the rest of where if a prophet comes and mounts the podium as he's talking to you you are standing from that plane and discerning whether or not he's a noise maker no matter how accurate he's speaking you can look at him and know that this man is functioning by divination and when he attempts to lay his hands on you that's where his deliverance will start you are an ordinary member carrying heaven with you the bible talks about a man called stephen he was serving tables he was not part of the apostles but he allowed the heavens to be so open over him that his appearance was like that of an angel when the heavens are open over you it will affect your physical body it will affect your outlook are you listening to me it will change and reconfigure you ask moses when he stayed under open heavens for 40 days the bible says he stepped out and his countenance changed when jesus christ in his transfiguration manifested the power of open heavens the bible says he was as bright that we function under open heavens in this prayer series is my it's my desire that everyone everyone not special people everyone that when you are i will cry and i will weep when i see any one of us just lamenting over challenges as if we cannot do anything about it it's our job to orient you you are not the ones who need help you are the helpers and so god is helping you here so that you will not need to cry and beg the world that when this brother is moving we have put a mindset in him you know you are not alone have this mindset every time you are no matter how casual it is i am always aware that i am not alone i am not alone say yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me do you know how many let me tell you something don't be afraid of they that want to kill you or any of these things do you know how many times people have tried to scheme things against me there was a time manasseh was tell, a gentleman called him ask him he will tell you someone called him and said do you know just joshua selman he said yes he just said be warned and he switched off the phone joking you want to kill me you will die for nothing i'm telling you for nothing No matter how mad a man is, he knows fire when he sees it. I am too immune. There is more than what you see. There is more than what you see. Elisha said, oh God, let him see the open heavens over us. And suddenly when the servant looked, he saw chariots of fire waiting for the command of sons. Pakapara sitabaya. I refuse to fear refuse to live in weakness there is more that i can do the heavens are opened over me take that heavens to your finances take that heavens to your work take that heavens over your body challenge yourself i'll never have a reason 
why I will not be able to come and preach one day because sickness kept me never challenge yourself these things are not magic they are not just show on stage there is a realm where the heavens can be opened over you there is such a realm where the heavens can be opened where everything you touch becomes blessed everything you touch multiplies when you touch death life that's John G Lake we are going to be praying and stretching ourselves in the spirit it takes prayer every portal that was created in the bible the fathers of faith opened up an altar and raised incense and like John Farrell when we pray we create altars that raises incense there is a continual activity between the heavens oh there are angels moving over as we pray because they confirm the words of his messengers i'm challenging you many of you as you pray you will begin to see jesus you will see angels the cords will be loosened over your eyes rise up as we pray instrumentalists pray your best stretch it in the spirit pack up your chairs lie down rise up you can come to the altar if you want to for the next 30 to 45 minutes we are going to be stretching in the spirit no laziness no tiredness find a position and begin to pray the heavens La pato sekete laka, rapa zosa taya, rabari kete lekosi. You can leave your seats and walk around. Come, come to the altar and walk around. Rapa zata baria, meko press kebashia. Inside and outside, walk around. We must become living portals, living portals, functioning under open heavens. Hallelujah. Can you help some of the ministers with mics? Help some of the ministers with mics. I like us to pray tonight. We are here for serious business. Rapata barara bosh, rakata tabarara. Walk around, walk around. Back up your chairs. Walk around. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Rakata tabarata, rakata bosh, meko bosh, repete lete, meko bosh, rakadeke.
Never be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. While we were praying, I saw many demonic forces in the heaven and it was like beams of light with fire that's what was leaving us shooting into the heavens that's what I saw we are going to pray right now hear me we are going to decree change in the heavens are you hearing me change I don't care what area of change are you listening to me now is not the time to get tired and to sleep if you are tired walk around we are going to command change from the heavens are you ready to pray lift up your voice Hey! 
Listen to me. Listen to me. Right now, many of you, when we are taking another series, we take the series part by part. I'm going to teach you on supplications, petitions, prayers, different kinds of prayers. Are you listening to me? Now is the time to bring... See, let me tell you. You have not brought your issue face to face with the true spirit of prayer. That's why it has not changed. Nothing can stand the power. I'm not talking of religious prayer. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous it generates tremendous power to change listen 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 everybody in this place has an issue or an area there are areas we are trusting God to conquer and I know we declare by faith that it is done but right now you are going to take one issue everybody one issue and you are going to place it in front of you and generate energy the power of praying in tongues are you listening to me like a priest and tell it you will fall now now not later it may be finances it may be your health i'm not talking of your family yourself i need you to have a testimony that comes on the wings of prayer are you ready now there are issues for some of us delay for some of us there's nothing that you touch that will prosper hold on hold on hold on when you get dissatisfied with where you are i was diagnosed i've told you i was diagnosed to have a fungal infection and they said hell will never grow on my head again at a point i was diagnosed with an eye condition and i was to stay like that and use glasses for the rest of my life there was a time the side of my chest used to pain me i don't know what for when i wake up in the morning intense pain when you get angry are you listening to me and it's from the spirit this is not just emotional are you listening to me that's what the bible calls the spirit of faith when it rises you put the issue before you and pray it like a priest if the heavens have been closed over your finances you have been faithfully tithing you have been faith let me tell you something koinonia is the place where we flog it out with destiny are you listening to me in these few minutes i like you to pray whether it's delay, set, whatever it is. All this pray for me, pray for me. Tonight we have an open heavens. I'd like you to generate energy in the spirit. Even if your voice sees it, it will come back tomorrow. Lift up your voice. Pray. 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 Papa, papa, 
Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Are you listening to me? That's what I see in the spirit. Fire is burning in this place. For you will know that he's not a man and that when he speaks he is faithful to bring it to pass that's what the lord says i should say for you will know that he is not a man hallelujah listen pick up your bibles pick up your bibles ezekiel 37 we're about to prophesy great fire burning in this place the bible says he make it his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire for you will be strong you will be built you will be established and then you will reign in power unlimited this is the heritage of the sons in Christ. Ezekiel 37. God will give you impossible miracles. When you pray and you generate power in the spirit, your words become powerful. As you speak, there is a performance. Because you are speaking by the spirit of prophecy. You are not just making empty noise. He says he confirms 
the words of his servant your words become like fire because they are coming from the ovens of the spirit Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry the first challenge I have is that the bones died in the valley they never were bones on the mountain are you listening to me he said the bones were found where in the valley that's why he said do i walk through that valley where there are bones it's a location in the realm of the spirit it's not a physical valley it's where satan brings discouragement and where the great become weak until they become bones he calls it a valley who told the psalmist that he said do i walk why didn't he say do i walk through the path he called it a valley it's a spiritual location don't be misled it's not your geographical valley for the things in the spirit are not like the natural i know many of you have been imagining a valley it's a spiritual location the psalmist said though i walk in that same valley when the things that made those men become bones come i will not be afraid for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me the valley said in that valley is a place where there is only desolation when you find yourself in that valley there is no hope that's where satan keeps a lot of people including tongue-talking believers and the bible said it was very dry i show you a mystery tonight follow me could be sickness could be discouragement depression failure and he said unto me that's what god is asking you tonight son of man can these bones live again can your dreams live again can your hopes live again the arm that has fallen oh samson can your hair grow again he will not only restore the hair he can give you new eyes no matter how much you have been battered if you can have two ears and a leg you can get everything back the lord is asking you a question you're going to answer it in the next prayer session listen there is no hopeless situation not in Christ the trouble is we walk in too much carnality we read too much scientific things the greatest enemy of flowing in the spirit is logic and common sense son of man can these bones can this business live again can this idea live again can your broken home live again son of man you call yourself a christian where is the evidence the nations are waiting tonight the lord is saying will you partner with me son of man can it rise again job can you rise again to become the greatest man in the east And the prophet said only thou knowest he said lord i cannot deny that this situation is too impossible not when the heavens are open because god's raw material for creation is called nothing nothing he created everything and the word of god does not just restore it recreates Let hope rise 
darkness dwell in your holy land. Can you sing it one more time before we pray? Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy land. Hallelujah. Verse 4 is our next prayer point. And he said unto me, Joshua Selman, prophesy. Manasseh, prophesy. Your situation is at the mercy of your prophecy. Your prophecy, listen, the prophetic does not just reveal the future, it creates one. Son of man, for how long will you watch your life go down? Prophesy. Son of man, for how long will you share your problems with everyone? Prophesy. For how long will your business fall? For how long will you beg? Prophesy. Are you ready to prophesy? Listen. Listen. Now you're not just going to pray in tongues. You're going to make decrees. Hear me? We are not talking to God now. Hello? Those outside, can you hear me? Say hallelujah, those outside. Listen. You are not going to talk to God about anything now. Put on your kingly robe. And we're going to manifest a dimension of dominion called exousia. Speaking by the authority of the king begin to prophesy force your situation to change i am blessed i am great i call for favor come out pray favor follows me everywhere i go i'm the head and not the tail no death can be found in my body. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Command Satan to take his hands from your finances. Take your hands from my health. Take your hands from my mind. Prophesy. Prophesy. Son of man. Prophesy. Son of man. Prophesy. Prophesy. Don't keep quiet. I prophesy. Greatness. I prophesy. I use the weapon of the prophetic, the weapon of the prophetic, the weapon of the prophetic. Grace in business, grace in ministry, impact by the power of the Holy Ghost. Long life, I prophesy. I prophesy favor. I prophesy glory. I prophesy joy. I prophesy greater levels. Son of man, use the weapon of the prophetic. Use the weapon of the prophetic. Use the weapon of the prophetic. Prophesy, make up a greatness, glory, lifting. I am the head, not the tail. Above, not beneath. The lines are falling for me in pleasant places. I have a good heritage. No death, no death. I refuse to die. I refuse to be sick. I refuse sickness. I refuse sickness. 
weakness. I refuse failure. I refuse failure. Prophesy every mountain before the rubber you become play before the rubber Satan the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord rebuke you over God's people Satan hear me the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you The Lord rebuke you. For you will know that you met the Lord tonight. You will see how helpless Satan can be on the wings of faith and power. Listen. Listen. The prophetic is not just a ministry. It's an instrument of creation in the spirit. The prophetic is not just a ministry. It's an instrument of creation. The capacity to say let there be like God calling the things that be not as though they were. Calling them from where? From the heavens. From the realm of the spirit. Calling the things that be not. If they already are, there's no need to call them. Calling the health that be not. Calling the prosperity that be not. Calling the increase that be not. Calling the favor that be not. Under open heavens. Hallelujah. Where you will never know dryness in your life. Where you will never know the wilderness. That everywhere you go, his presence is. No decay. No setback. This is why we are challenging you tonight. I have a desire in my heart. That the presence of God will reconfigure you. That people will know. You will have a testimony. Hallelujah. I prophesy over your life. That from today. In a strange and unusual dimension. You will begin to function under open heavens. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That everywhere you are. You will be noted for releasing the supernatural releasing the miraculous releasing signs and wonders in the name of jesus everywhere there is darkness that when you step in you will bring light you will bring glory that everywhere there is weakness at the sight of you you bring strength you are not the weak you are not the beggarly. No. Refuse it. Deliver yourself from that mindset. You are the great. 
you are the strong you are the able you are the giants you are the champions you are royalty anointed by the power of the spirit I declare that every challenge that has been an issue for you as you begin to function under these open heavens I decree visions of the night visions of the day strategies by the spirit you begin to receive heavenly visitations visitations of angels visitations of Jesus the living creatures the saints of all I prophesy into your spirit man in the name of Jesus I cause an alignment in your spirit let there be an alignment in your spirit man that you begin to see the things that men cannot see you begin to hear the things that men cannot hear in the night while you sleep you will see I prophesy if I be called of God let your spirit be open in the name of Jesus the eyes that will see beyond your age beyond your level of exposure uncommon wisdom uncommon insight uncommon power grace grace miracles will flow freely and then your life will become a testimony to unbelievers that your God is not there for when they see your light they will know that he reigns over you hallelujah say after me I am great I am the mighty yes that's who you are that's your true identity in Christ walk in that consciousness you mustn't be ministry walk in that consciousness there is an open heavens walk in that consciousness when you enter your room there is an open heavens stop saying I'm confused that's not your language that's not your language stop it don't say it doesn't matter stop it don't say I'm confused I don't know what to do especially ladies you know what to do there is an anointing within you that teaches you all things for when you are confused begin to pray in the spirit stir up that waters many of you will enjoy the ministry of angels I tell you they will come to you you will know them by name they will become your friends they will partner with you they will make you giants for you will do things beyond your capacity you will bring words you will bring ideas insights in the spirit they will show you doorways they will show you doorways to greatness in the spirit for are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation it's a new season for you it's a new season for you hallelujah you may not realize how transformed you are until you step out you will literally feel like a giant see those who smoke and drink this is the feeling they try to get this is what they are looking for now you feel high but you are not under the in this is exactly how they feel when they take these things they don't see impossibilities again it's satan's way of attempting to bring them to this realm for now your doubts melt away like Samson it melts like flax before your hands and you are empowered and energized to go back you are a king your royalty go and take your checkbooks and put them and pray on them and say Lord ideas and grace I know my family members cannot help me now I need to begin to help them. 
go and pray lay your hands on your bed and say there is an open portal over this bed your unbeliever friends lie down only to wake up with a radical transformation for they will see the things that you see upon your bed they will wear your clothes and carry an anointing they cannot explain they will come to steal things in your room and you come and find them on the floor there under the anointing they came under open heavens a man steals your property and brings it back crying after days and say it wasn't useful to me open heavens where people come and meet you and apologize and say i'm the person who has been speaking wrong against you you cannot tell what has been happening to me open heavens when you lift up your voice to make a request then you see a lot of people ready to meet your needs to explain somebody just wakes up and takes it a responsibility to be sending 30 30 thousand every month to your account no strings attached open heavens i'm not talking of your uncle he says strangers shall feed your flock not your relatives you have been disobeying scripture that for those of you who will not listen to what i'm saying this is the time of frustration for you like never before that after all i'm saying you still put your eyes in men i've said this thing again and again my uncle promised me my auntie said this and that whatever god cannot give you my brothers anybody that tried to give you is deceiving you for the greatest of any man is still a man are you listening to me this is how to be victorious go and teach your roommates organize little bible study sessions in your room you mustn't call it the name of your ministry organize it they are sleeping tell them wake up as your life improved the way you are lying down like this wake up and sit down they will laugh at you but no man denies results the end of every argument is results when they begin to see this is why listen christianity that does not have results is frustrating you may just keep quiet but we are motivated by the manifestations of the word of god in our life and when they see your life truly they will know that your god reigns and then they will listen to your message when you are speaking they will not laugh at you again now they are permitted to laugh they laughed at sarah until isaac came hallelujah thank you jesus go back to your roommates hear me i'm challenging everyone begin to do something with the anointing upon your life otherwise it will never grow many of us think ministry when your roommate tells you i had a dream and somebody was chasing me start smiling that's an opportunity to practice what we are doing if it doesn't work come back next friday and say josh i tried it and it didn't work i was okay let's let's see how we can fix it up do something many of you are not seeing your progress because you are not doing anything nigerians are known for not taking action we can take we can have informations but we don't do anything look for someone who is sick person is throwing up and vomiting say thank you jesus now it's an opportunity to experiment this if the person is not healed they will not beat you so long as you don't collect money the problem is when you collect money and leave promises they will beat the living daylight out of you when they are not healed tell them can i pray with you you see someone you have been trying to preach to go under open heavens you will be surprised what will i say he may just start with a story the next thing you see the person crying and weeping on the floor and you tell the person jesus is calling and they are hearing more than your voice they are hearing voices because you are speaking under open heavens lord we thank you for tonight we thank you for your grace it's our desire to live under open heavens lord let this not just be a message we begin to live this supernatural life commanding unending victories in our lives challenging the works of darkness dethroning principalities over our communities challenging all the mountains and the spheres of influence that you have given us we are well able lord we give you all the glory let every faint heart arise tonight you are strong in christ in the name of jesus christ very quickly while standing 
please if you're coming here for the first time we'll soon be done i'd like you to please quickly um jump up and come out if this is your first time inside and outside we want to pray for you and bless you appreciate them as they come if this is your first time of worshiping with us please and please let's do it quickly appreciate them they are coming just this way inside and outside please find your way to the front very quickly appreciate them please let's save time you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden appreciate them as they come they are still coming thank you very much for coming we celebrate you we appreciate you you will never be the same you will never be the same you will command power in the heavens thank you lord jesus hallelujah thank you very much for making our time to worship with us this is koinonia hallelujah thank you for coming how many of you were blessed tonight you will never be the same hallelujah it's our desire that you grow in intimacy with the holy spirit that you understand his ways you understand his kingdom hallelujah we're challenging you to love him more to serve him more and to walk in the authority of the king we're going to pray for you right now as we stretch our hands to pray for you i'd like you to receive we're going to pray the blessings of god into your life hallelujah let's pray for them just stretch your hands saints of god we declare that you are blessed we declare that you are blessed in the name of jesus great grace for you glory for you in the name of jesus you are empowered by the hand of god his face shines upon you in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.